Hey, Scott Austin here. And what I want to show you is a modified breadcrumb for the checkout experience. And that's what you see right here with these numbered dots. One, two, three, four. And with the different you know steps of the checkout. Now, this process only works for Shopify Plus stores because you need to be able to edit your checkout.liquid file and you're only able to do that if you're a Shopify Plus store. So what I'm gonna do is provide the full code to make this work. Um, and if you're looking at this on YouTube, just go to the blog article that I'll link to on my website in the, in the description and you'll see the code. Or if you're on my blog, you'll see it right there also. You just grab the code and that code looks like this. So what I have here is check out breadcrumbs liquid, right? And I'm just gonna close a couple other files so we don't get confused here. And this is all the code you need to make the breadcrumbs work. That said, if you go to checkout liquid, if you're a Shopify Plus store, you'll have, you should have a checkout liquid in your theme. If not, the Shopify support team can add it for you. And what you'll see is down a little bit farther, we've got this breadcrumb element, and that's, that was there by default, and I commented that out. So that was the breadcrumbs that was just the little text breadcrumbs, right? So that's what shows up by default. And what I added was a render for the checkout breadcrumbs snippet, which is the one that we add here. So the code snippet I'm gonna show you is what you need to add to checkout breadcrumbs. Just copy the whole thing, create a new snippet, drop it in there. And you'll have to go to checkout liquid and add the render line for the checkout breadcrumbs and comment out or delete the breadcrumb element. So if we look at the liquid file, you'll see what we have is there's some CSS down at the bottom for styling of the elements. At the top, we've got some liquid code, and it's just an if-then statement. And you can see, you know, there's the if content for layout contains data step contact information. So this is how we decide which step in the process we're in. And what we do, regardless of which step we're in, we show the same four dots. All we do differently is which ones are clickable, right? So when you're on a step, let's just go on to shipping method as the next step. In shipping method, you notice when I hover over customer information, it's, it's a clickable link, same thing with cart, but shipping method's not clickable because I'm on that step, and payment method's not clickable because we want you to click the buttons to go on forward. So I can you know, go back here and I can you know, move forward again, and I can pick my shipping you know, method. I can also move on to the payment method. And like I said, each of the previous methods or steps is clickable. So one of the things we do differently for each of those four, and those are LI elements, um, is we decide which ones of the previous ones are clickable. So you see in the first one here, only one of them is clickable, and that's to go back to the cart. In the second one, two of them are clickable, the cart and the uh, contact information, and then you know so on and so forth. So that's one thing we change in each of these four conditions. The other thing we change is the class names for those elements, because the class names determine the coloring that happens. So we've got a, a normal BC item, a BC, you know, BC for breadcrumb, complete, and from those we come up with the CSS styling. I think there's complete and there's also current. Yeah, there we go, current. So those three classes determine if it's a green, that's a complete. If it's orange, it's current. And then the BC, they're all BC items and they get that default treatment of the transparent background. So then I also in the CSS or in the, uh, the liquid snippet, I have a couple of signs just because I, I like making a signs and, and defining a color code that way so that when I reuse color codes down here, I, you know, it's easier for me to just think of the name. Oh, I'm looking for green for here instead of trying to figure out which one of the hex codes is the green one. So I always like doing this, doing a sign for the different color codes I'm gonna use, give them a name, and then use those names down below. But if you follow that logic, you'll, you'll be able to see pretty quickly that you know, the color coding that happens on these different elements. So that is uh, the file, and here you can see it working. You know, we went through the steps already. 
it works, you know, fine. And this is generic of any theme that you're working in because this is just, you know, liquid code. There's no JavaScript going on here. And we're only using the settings for color inside of this snippet. So we're not calling any theme settings to bring in the color because we're defining the colors right there. So this code should work in any theme if you have a Shopify Plus store with a checkout.liquid template. Hopefully that helps. Thanks for watching.